Digital FPV systems like DJI, Walksnail, and HD Zero have the ability to display on-screen display in the goggles just like analog systems. And just like analog systems, the fonts that they use are big, blocky, monochrome, ugh. It's like we've got high definition, high resolution displays, but we're still using these old outdated fonts. Wouldn't it be nice if we could have crisp, high resolution color fonts in our digital goggle OSD? Yes, it would. And yes, you can. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Usually when I make a video like this, I try to only put the stuff in the video that you actually need to know to do the thing that the video is about. But this video is a little bit weird because all three of the digital video systems, DJI, Walksdale, and HD Zero, have the capability of doing custom fonts, but the way that you set them up and the exact capabilities are different between them. And I don't think it makes sense to split this content into three separate videos, especially because some people out there have all of these systems and are going to be using all of this information. As a reminder, there are timestamps and chapter markers down in the video description below, as well as YouTube is showing the timestamps and chapter markers in the timeline at the bottom of the video, and you can use that to easily skip to the part of the video that you're most interested in. But we're going to start this video with something that everybody is going to need to know, no matter what video system they're working with, and that is how to find the font files and download the font files that are then going to be used to to change the font that is shown in the goggles. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to be doing this tutorial with the fonts available from Sneaky FPV, and I'll put a link to this website down in the video description below. The reason we're doing this is that Sneaky FPV fonts, well, first of all, they look pretty nice, but uh, that's just a matter of personal preference, and you may find that other font packs out there look better for your particular needs. The other reason we're going to go with Sneaky is that Sneaky has fonts for all of the systems that we're going to be working with. There are separate fonts for WTFOS, Walk Snail and HD Zero. And this is nice because if you like this font, you're probably going to want to be able to use it on all of the systems that you might have. The other font packs that are out there, not all of them have fonts available for all of the different variants that we might want to work with. The other variant that we need to be aware of is that the fonts are different depending on which flight control firmware you're using. So you can see here that there are fonts for RGPilot, Betaflight, and iNav. And don't worry, if you have multiple different quadcopters with multiple different firmwares on them, then you can install multiple fonts to the different goggles and they will use the correct one for whichever firmware that you've got. We'll go more into detail on that as we get into the individual sections. And the first system we're going to demonstrate this on is the DJI system. And I'm holding the DJI V2 goggles, and that's not a coincidence. If you have the DJI goggles too, and or you have the O3 air unit, this isn't going to work on those. This is only going to work on the V1 and the V2 goggles and the older generation of video transmitters, the Vista, the Runcam Link, the DJI air unit, anything except for the O3. If you have the O3 and the goggles too, they support the full Betaflight OSD, but they don't support the custom fonts that we're going to demonstrate here. In some ways, the DJI system is the simplest one to set up. Once you have OSD working, all you have to do to set it up is copy some files onto the SD card, and that's it. But in other ways, it's the most complicated one to get working because the V2 goggles and the Vista generation of video transmitters don't support full Betaflight OSD at all, never mind custom fonts. And I'm really torn on how to approach this because I like to have everything you need to know in one video, but I also have tutorials about how to get OSD working, and I think the safest and smartest thing to do is to refer you to those. So, number one, you need to root the goggles and root the air unit using WTFOS. I've got a tutorial how to do that. You root them, you install WTFOS on them, and you install the MSP OSD plugin. If you've already done all that, fantastic. If you haven't done all that, you're going to pause the video, you're going to go down to the video description, find the link, and you're going to go to my tutorial about how to do those things. After that, now they're rooted, and you have WTFOS installed. Yay! You need to set up your flight controller. And I've got a tutorial about how to do that, and it is linked in the video description below. And if you haven't got a working OSD in your goggles with Betaflight, preferably Betaflight 4.4, although that's not mandatory for this, uh, for this to work, 
And if you don't have that, you're going to go down there and you're going to watch that tutorial and then you're going to come back here. Okay, at this point, you have a working Betaflight OSD or Argipilot or iNav, I keep saying that, but I only have tutorials for Betaflight because of who I am as a person. You've got a working OSD in your DJI goggles and what you want to know is how do I do the custom font? And this is the part that could not be simpler. I'm going to take the SD card out of the goggles. I'm going to put the SD card in a card reader, get it on my computer, and I am simply going to copy the font files that I've selected into the root of the SD card. So here's basically the, the, the very first folder of the SD card that pops up. That's literally all you have to do. Once those files are present on the SD card, then the goggle will read them and will use them. Now there's a couple of little quirks here that you should know about. And one of the quirks is that you can actually have multiple sets of font files for multiple different types of flight controller. So these are the default fonts uh, and you can see there's font.bin, font underscore ardu.bin for ardupilot, font underscore bf dot bin for beta flight, font underscore inav, and font underscore ultra for kiss ultra. If you fly quadcopters with multiple different flight controllers, you're going to want to download all of those fonts and you're going to want to put all of them on your SD card. And the nice thing is that WTFOS will automatically detect what type of flight controller you've got and automatically load the correct font. The reason there's different fonts for different flight controllers is that different flight controllers use different character sets in their OSDs. So you can't just have one sort of master font for all of them. But personally, I fly almost exclusively Betaflight, so I've simply copied the BF Betaflight fonts, and that's all I need to do to have it working. Although it's very simple to set this up, there is something about it that really bugs me, and that is that the fonts are stored on the SD card, which means that if you format your SD card, which I make a habit at the beginning of every flight session, I put a fresh SD card into the goggles and I format the SD card. Uh, and then when at the end of the flight session, I take the SD card out, I put it in the computer, I read the files, and then later I do it all again. I don't leave a single SD card in the goggles all the time, and I regularly format it just to make sure it's clean and ready to go. And if you do that, your font files will get erased. So wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to permanently install the font files on the goggles? Well, I'm telling you that there is. Now, this video from Shannon Baker shows a way to do it. And you can see from the fact that it's 30 minutes long, it's somewhat involved. I haven't done this and I don't know how foolproof or this is, but I would at least give it a try if that really bugs you like it really bugs me. The FPVWTF devs, I think, are working on making this an official feature where the font files are stored on the goggle and then you don't have to worry about it. But for the time being, you have to go through these somewhat complex manual steps if you want to accomplish that. Now let's install custom fonts on the Walksnail system. And just like we did with DJI, we're gonna go download the font files. Uh, we need to download the fonts specifically for Walksnail. They're in a different format for WTFOS and HD0. And we're gonna download the Betaflight fonts because that's where we're using. But although we could also download the iNav and RGPilot fonts and install them as well. So I'm going to click here on Betaflight. There's a little uh, note here. I don't know. We'll try to keep that in mind going forward. Uh, and I guess I'm going to take the latest version, version 1.3. There's actually three choices here. I think I used Contrax. So we'll go ahead and download this. And right here, we've got a readme file, which has some instructions for how to install the fonts. And it couldn't be simpler. Here is the SD card that I took out of the goggles. Uh, it's been formatted inside the goggles and is ready to go. And here is the zip file I just downloaded. And we're just gonna take these files and we're gonna drag them over to the zip, uh, to the SD card. Make sure that you don't overlook the font underscore update dot any file, which is required to get this functionality to work. Then I'm gonna put that SD card back in the goggles. After that, we're gonna go into the goggle menu. We're gonna go to display and then we're gonna to go to font update. And this will cause the goggles to read the custom font that we've just installed off the SD card. You can see that after I do that, the custom OSD changes to custom and the custom font changes to BFWS. Don't worry about that right now. If I back out of the menu though, you will see that sure enough, we now have the updated sneaky font on the goggles, fantastic. 
If we go back to that custom OSD option, and we can look at the menu items there and infer what it does. Notice that custom OSD can be set to Betaflight, iNav, RGPilot, Fettech, or KISS. Uh, it can also be set to custom, and that's what it needs to be set to to cause it to use the font files that we installed on the SD card, or it can be set to off, in which case it won't show the OSD at all, or it can be set to auto, in which case it will try to auto detect what type of flight controller you're using. That would be the, the best option if you're using the default walk snail fonts and you have a whole bunch of different types of flight controllers and you don't want it to have to manually switch font files between each one. If you wanna use a custom font, you will need to set that to custom and then you'll need to manually go down and change fonts as you switch between different flight controllers. Now, if we go back to the SD card and open up that font underscore update dot any file, we can see that there's a little more to this than I've shown you so far. You can actually install multiple custom fonts and switch between them in the menu as you like. If we edit this file, we can get some insight into how to do that. But I think the simplest thing to do is gonna to be to go back to uh, the Sneaky website. And let's go ahead and download the iNav uh, font in addition to the Betaflight one. So here are the iNav font files, and you can see here's the actual font itself, the PNG, and fontupdate.ini. Let's go ahead and take these iNav PNG files, that's the actual graphics of the font itself, and let's open up the iNav fontupdate.ini, and we'll open up the Betaflight font.ini on the right. So what we're going to need to do if we want to have both of these at the same time is we're going to take this block of text, we're going to copy it, and we're going to paste it over into the file on the uh, SD card. We're then going to change the count from 1 to 2 because we now have two fonts, and we're going to say 1 equals BWFS and 2 equals INAV. And then we're going to save that file on the SD card. And once we've done that, if we then go to the custom font, we should see BW, BFWS and INAV as options. Now, if I set that incorrectly, if I've got a Betaflight quadcopter and I load an INAV font, the character set isn't gonna be right and the OSD isn't gonna look right. As far as I can tell though, this is the only way to have custom fonts and a mixture of different Cus, uh, uh, flight controllers. When we looked at the DJI system, uh, DJI, you can load all of the custom fonts for RGPilot, Betaflight, INAV, KISS, you can put them all on the SD card, and WTFOS will automatically pick the right one for whatever type of flight controller you've got. It seems to me that WalkSnail can only do the auto selection if you have the standard fonts but if you want to use custom fonts, there's no way to designate that the custom font is for iNav or for RGPilot and let it auto-select. It seems like you have to manually select as you go from aircraft to aircraft. Hey there, folks. Joshua from the future. I'm happy to report I just tested and can confirm that if you remove the SD card from the WalkSnail goggles, the font appears to have been uploaded permanently to the goggles, and so you don't have to worry about keeping that SD card in there or formatting it. Once you make the change, it's remembered. That's really cool. Thank you, Walksnail. The instructions for how to get a custom font working with HD0 are here at this GitHub page, uh, linked down in the video description below, of course, like all of the links that I'm showing you throughout this video. So we're gonna take a formatted SD card out of the goggles, put it into the card reader on our computer, and we're gonna download the font that we wanna use. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be the HD0 Betaflight font. As long as we're here, I'd also like to point out that there are other fonts you might wanna look at here in the HD0 OSD font library. As I said earlier in the video, we're just using the sneaky font as an example, and it's uh, available for all of the different systems for consistency. Unfortunately, getting this working is not as simple as just dropping that file onto the SD card. And as you can see here, the exact instructions differ depending on which video receiver module you've got. In addition, you're going to need to make sure you are on a recent firmware. The safest thing to do would just to be to go today and download the latest firmware and flash it to your goggles and your video transmitter to make sure that you have support for this feature. The exact version of the firmware that supports this feature differs depending on your hardware, but just download the latest and then you'll definitely have it. In order to install the font file, we're going to go to the SD card and we're going to make a new folder and it's going to be named resource. Uh, it looks like if you have the Sharkbyte VRX, 
the HD Zero VRX4 or the Scout HD, it needs to have a capital R. Uh, but it looks like for the HD Zero goggle, which is what I've got, it is a lowercase r. So that's what I'm going to do. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it does. I don't know. We're going to follow the instructions exactly. Then for the HD Zero goggle, we're going to go into that folder. We're going to make another folder named OSD. And we're going to go into that folder and make another folder named FC. Then we're going to take that file that we downloaded, the sneaky font file, and we're going to put it into that folder on the SD card. So it's going to be in resource backslash OSD backslash FC. For all of the others, it is going to be just in resource. Oh, huh. oh, just like that. All I had to do was, uh, was insert the SD card. Didn't have to power cycle the goggles or anything. Just boom, it started working. That's amazing. At this point, you should be seeing these beautiful custom OSDs while you fly. And there's another place you might like to see the custom OSD fonts that I'm gonna tell you about in just a second. But before I do that, let me just take one second to remind you that if you value the kind of content that I'm making here, then the best way for you to support me is to join my Patreon. Patreon's a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. Just pick an amount that you think is proportional to the value that you're getting from my content. Head over to the link in the video description, patreon.com, and sign up. If today's the day that I earned your support, I'd love to have it. And if I haven't earned it yet, I'll keep making the content. You keep watching the content and maybe that day will come. Now, if you've got HD0, what I'm about to tell you doesn't matter because HD0 already does what I'm about to show you the workaround for automatically. And what HD0 does that the other goggles don't do is record the OSD in the DVR file. If you've got OSD visible while you're flying, it will be recorded in the DVR. That's, there's no additional steps you need to take. If you've got WTFOS with DJI, there is a third-party utility that can render the OSD and allow you to overlay it on the files. And I've got a tutorial about that, and I'm going to put a card on screen where you can go watch it, as well as a link down in the video description. See you there.